good day to you and I hope you've got your cup of tea or cup of coffee I've got a cup of tea today we're on the farm snow is in the background the cattle are grazing quietly it's a beautiful winter's day and I've got a special word for you and I really want you to relax to sit down and to listen carefully we are going to be talking today about the living years Folks, we don't have time to waste. It's going to be a hard message because you're going to have to do something after this message. But it's going to be a message that will revolutionize your life. If you've got your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to just read a couple of verses from verse 23 onwards. And Jesus says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. He goes on to say in verse 25, agree with your adversary. That person that you've got an argument with, agree with him, make peace with him. Quickly, while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you are thrown into prison. Now this is the word of the Lord Jesus Christ according to my agricultural manual, right? the New King James Version. You know what I love about the Word of God? The Word of God is so practical, isn't it? It's not theory, it's practical. What Jesus is saying, let's just start with the adversary. If you owe somebody money, often young men will come to me and say, I don't know what to do. You know, I owe money everywhere. I've lost my job. I don't want to run away. I want to pay them, but I don't know how to handle it. So I'm trying to ignore it and hoping that it will go away. Listen to me now. It won't go away. You owe the money and you have to pay. Why? Because God said so. Be no man's debtor. So what you do is after this program, you get in your motor car and you go and you visit the man or the woman that you owe money to. Don't phone them. It's too easy. Don't ignore them because they will go to the judge and they will put you in jail because you're not paying your debt. Go to them, sit down and say, listen, I am extremely sorry. I've been avoiding you. I just, I just haven't known how to speak to you. But I've heard the word of God today and I want to come and tell you I am not running away. I'm not going to leave the country. I'm staying right where I am. I am going to pay you. Even if it is five rand, five dollars a month, I'm going to pay you until the money is finished. Please give me some time. Now, now folks, I want you to listen to this practically. What does it benefit that man if he's going to put you in jail and he's going to lose all his money anyway? It's not going to benefit him at all. So if you go there with a sincere heart and you tell him that you've been convicted by the Lord and that you are going to pay him back every cent plus the interest, okay? but you need time. He will give you time because he's a businessman. He wants his money back. But if you, if you keep avoiding him, what's going to happen is he's going to think that you are making a plan to leave the country or to run away and he will get you arrested he will prosecute you, you'll go to jail, he'll lose his money, and you will maybe lose your family. See, that's why I love this word. It's so simple. 
I want to talk to you today about relationships. Some of you watching this program, you love the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what God's shown me. You love the Lord with a passion. But there's somebody that you cannot forgive. And as I was talking to the film crew before this meeting, it's like sometimes having a stone in your shoe. If you're a jogger like me, and you get that stone in your shoe, it works its way down to your heel and it aggravates you. Small stone. You don't want to stop because you're losing time, but it's annoying. Now, if there's somebody that you haven't forgiven, or you, there's somebody that you know has got a problem with you, go to them, Jesus says, sort it out, and then move along. Stop on the road, take your shoe off, knock out that stone and put your shoe back on and you'll run like, like the wind. You cannot go forward with God if you know that somebody has got ought against you. The Lord says, don't even take your, your, your gift to the altar. I don't want it. Go and sort out that problem. You say to me, but Angus, he won't speak to me. Well, then you need to write to him. You need to ask him to forgive you because there's two sides to every story. Make no mistake. Okay, it takes two to tango, two to dance, as they say. You can't dance by yourself. So it doesn't matter what happens. It's also his fault. But that's not the issue. The issue is yourself. You see, sometimes somebody has made you so upset. They carry on with their lives. It's not affecting them. It's affecting you and me. We're carrying around a 50 kg bag of cement on our backs instead of just dealing with it. So today, we are believing that the Lord is going to set you free in this program. But remember, faith has got feet. So the Lord is expecting you by faith to step on the water, then He'll make it hard underneath. If you do not go and confront that situation, nothing's going to happen. Okay? What happens if He's slams the door in my face. Well, you've already been to see him, haven't you? You can walk away and say, Lord, I can't do any more than that. Okay, so the, the Lord Jesus Christ, let's have a look at it again. It's very simple. In verse 23, he says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled, to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Okay? There's a song called The Living Years. Maybe you've heard it. It's a song that made me cry. Because you see, just like you, I'm also a human being. And I've been through many, many altercations with other people. Where unintentionally I've offended people, unintentionally they've offended me. You carry that grudge, I tell you what, it will wear you down. Let's deal with it today so that we can be like that, that fish eagle, my favorite bird in the bush. I can soar up, in the, up into the mountains. I, I, I know I've got no burden that I've got to carry. Okay? So confess your sins, and He, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Okay? This is what it says. The living years. Basically, it's a young man that's singing this song. He's talking about his dad. He obviously had a problem with his dad. He couldn't speak to his dad. And then his dad died and he couldn't tell his dad that he loved him. Okay. The song says, say it loud. Dad, I love you. The song says, say it clear. Make your intentions known. Dad, you hurt me, but I forgive you. You're still my dad. I love you. Okay. You know, I counseled two men here not so long ago, and it was about a farm. The father didn't think that the son was qualified enough to take over the farm, and we had a long discussion about that. I said to the son, you cannot demand from your father the farm. Your dad built that farm up from nothing. He doesn't have to give it to you. He might choose to give it to you. He doesn't have to. He's not obligated to He's obligated to feed you, to clothe you, to give you a good education. That's it. I said, it's a gift. So the young boy's eyes got big and the dad was smiling. Then I turned around to the dad and I said, and by the way, if you don't hand this farm over, because your son is a chip off the old block, he's like you, 
he's going to leave with his young wife and his children and he's going to go somewhere else and make his own life. And you're getting old and you can't con uh, control the whole farm. So you're going to lose the farm anyway. By the time we had finished speaking, the young son started to cry, started to weep. And you know what he said? He said something that actually touched my heart. He said, Dad, when are you going to spend some more time with your grandchildren? Wow, folks. The old man, the father, didn't know what to say. He said, Dad, why don't you come with your pickup and pick up the two, your two grandchildren and take them around the farm and show them. They're desperate to be with you. The father had nothing to say. I must say, I brought a tear to my eye. I've got 10 grandchildren as well. There's a time that we need to spend with our loved ones. And you see, those two hadn't spoken like that. By the way, the young man called the meeting, not the father. And they were able to leave that room reconciled. And I believe, I'm trusting that granddad is spending more time with his grandchildren and letting his son get on with the farm and stop interfering. Communication is absolutely vital if you want to get on in life and do it in the living years, not afterwards. I go to some funerals and I sit there and a huge crowd arrives. Then I hear the minister get up and he says that this old man died lonely all by himself. And afterwards, everybody's saying what a great guy he was and what a fantastic farmer and what a wonderful man. And then I say to myself, but why didn't we go and tell him when he was alive? Why didn't we go and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee with him? Why are we coming now? He's not here anymore. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. When we close this program, I'm going to speak to you and I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to pick up that telephone and make an appointment and go and see that loved one. Angus, they won't speak to me. You'll be surprised. You're the one who's going to take the initiative. Why? Because you're a Christian. Because you love the Lord. And because Jesus said, don't bring me any of your sacrifices. Don't bring me any of your gifts. In fact, don't even talk to me if you can't talk to your, your son or your brother. The song goes on. It's too late when you die to make up. It's too late. I'll tell you a sad story. This is a true story. There was a man who had a drinking problem. He had, he had been on hard times. He didn't really have a job, but he had a good heart. He loved his wife, but he spent too much time drinking in the pub. The one night he'd come home, it must have been 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. He was blind drunk. His wife was worried that he was going to have a car accident. She was worried about where he was. He didn't phone her or anything. He walked into the bedroom. She was already lying in her bed. She wasn't sleeping. She was just lying there. And he literally collapsed on the bed next to her. Completely unconscious. She turned over and she said, I wish you would die. That's how angry she was. And eventually she went to sleep. The next morning she woke up and obviously she was remorseful. She didn't mean to say that. At least her husband was home and he was safe and she tapped him on the shoulder time to wake up and nothing happened. And she shook him a bit harder and nothing happened. She looked over and he was dead. He had died during the night. That lady used to come to me and she was totally broken. She kept saying to me, Angus, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean him to die. I love him. He's my husband. I want to say sorry to him, but I can't because he's not here anymore. And that is where you've got to apply grace. Grace from God is undeserved loving kindness, unmerited favor. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 tells us about grace. Folks, Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect through weakness. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. And I was able to say to her, let us pray about this. God knows your heart. You know your husband loved you. He was a Christian. Even though he was in a backslidden state, he was a Christian. Just leave it in God's hands. And she actually had to do that. And eventually she found peace. Now I'm saying to somebody watching this program, don't leave it too late. 
I'm not saying that you're in the wrong at all. But you need to settle this thing before that person dies, before it's too late. Coming back to that song, I wish I could have told him in the living years. Okay? And then he goes on to say, and when he hears his little baby cry, he can hear his father's voice. Folks, it's a sad song, but it's a real song. You and I still have time to put things right. Maybe you're watching this program and you say, Angus, I'm one of them. My loved ones died and I said things and I didn't mean it. What can we do? Well, we can say, Lord, forgive us. Lord, we didn't mean it. And leave it to God. Because otherwise, it just eats you up eventually. The hardest place to be a Christian is in your own home. I know what I'm talking about, folks. I'm a family man. I've got children. I've got grandchildren. My children are married. I've got spiritual children. Some of them are doing so well. Others are not doing so well. But I love them all the same. Pick up that telephone. Make that phone call. Make that contact. You say, I haven't seen my son for years. He's gone to England or he's gone to America. Find out where he is. Contact him. Tell him that you love him. Tell him the door's open. You can come home anytime, son. Anytime, daughter. But remember, you come home on my conditions. Okay? We don't try and reconcile through compromise. No, 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 no. If they are doing something that is contrary to the Word of God, okay, then you need to understand. You do not agree with their lifestyle, but you love them. You see what we do, a lot of us? We hate the sinner instead of hating the sin and loving the person. It's a big difference. You can't just hate people because they're doing something wrong. They are misled. They are deceived. And so you're hating them. No. Hate what they're doing, but not them. Never. And I'm talking about your own children. I'm talking about your own parents. I sat there praying yesterday with my uh, prayer partner. I've got two men that I pray with every week. And the one man told me he's just gone to a wedding. He went to a wedding and he said, Angus, it was an absolute shambles. He said, because the parents of the one um, uh, bridal party has already been married three times. So there's people from two different marriages there. On the other side, it's the same thing. It's chaos. No one knows who the... F I mean, it's almost laughable, but it's not laughable. Who the father is, who's walking the bride down the, the aisle, whether it's the first mother, the second, or the third. And who's giving away... You know what I'm saying? And it's an absolute mess. God forgives us, but the consequences remain. And I want to say to some young people who are saying, look, you know, I'm also going to follow Jesus, but I want to sow my wild oats first. I want to have some fun. Listen, young man, I can tell you from my own experience, don't do it. Okay? God will always forgive you if you repent. But the scar remains on your heart. Okay? So when you sow that wild seed, for example, you go out and you're sleeping around, that girl becomes pregnant. She has a baby. That is your responsibility for the rest of your life. And every time you see that child, you will remember what you did. You say, I don't even love the woman. Maybe not, but there's a child involved. There's a consequence for your actions, always. So rather than do it in the first place. So I want to pray for you that God will give you the courage to reconcile so that you can leave your gift at the altar, go and make up, and then come back and give it to the Lord. And I tell you what, it will change your life. You'll start thinking more clearly. You'll start sleeping better. You'll start making good decisions. And God will start to honor everything that you do. That person you owe money to. Straight after this program, go and tell them you're sorry. Tell them you will pay them as soon as you can. And then make a decision to do that. Pay them every single month. And then God will come into your corner and he will change your life and your business. That uh, loved one from your family that you are estranged with, make up. It's not worth it. There's no time left. 
to have uh, grudges. You don't want any regrets in life. Before that person dies, go and tell them you forgive them and you love them. And God will honor you. So I'm going to pray for you now that God will give you the courage. As I pray for you, I want you to bring to remembrance those people that have ought against you. The Bible doesn't say that you've got ought against them. I know you're sitting there and you're saying to me, Angus, I've got no problem from my side. No, you don't. But you know that they've got a problem with you or you think they have. Ask them. Say, what is it that's bugging you? Because we're just not talking to each other anymore. They might say, you know that one day that you walked past me, you didn't greet me. <laughs> you didn't even see them. See, you tell them that and all of a sudden it's all clear. The devil puts in thoughts. Oh, he didn't greet me because he doesn't like me, so I'm not going to greet him. And that's how these silly things start. Tell your wife that you love her. Every single morning when you wake up, that's what I tell Jill, I love her. I've been married for over 40 years. Tell her the obvious. Tell your husband that you appreciate the hard work that he's doing for you and the kids. Tell him. Now all he knows. Tell him again. Okay? Do that extra little thing. It just changes the dynamics in your home. Buy a bunch of flowers for your wife sometime. Yeah, but we don't do that. We'll do it this time. <laughs> okay? Cook your husband his favorite meal. I love roast chicken, by the way. Do it. It makes a big difference. You know, you can, uh, words are cheap, eh? but it's action that takes time and really makes the effect. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word today. Your word says that if we know that anybody's got ought against us, we must leave our, our gift at the altar, go and reconcile, sort out that problem, and then come back to the altar. I pray for my friends. There's some people watching this program that owe money, Lord. They don't know how to repay it. But I pray that they will become real. They will become honest. They will leave after this program and go to that person and make contact with them and say, I am sorry, but we will pay you as soon as we can. In fact, we're going to start paying even at the end of this month. doesn't matter if it's five rand, we're going to pay and I think there will be a change in the heavenlies, Lord. A change in their whole financial structure. I pray for that family, Lord, that was so strong and it's fragmented now because of misunderstandings, because of things said in the past and done, that they'll reconcile so that they'll be a strong family in the Lord. Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, there we have it. You've, you're going to leave us room. You're going to go and you're going to make that phone call. You're going to go and visit that person. And I tell you what, it's going to set you free. And you say, you don't know what's going to happen. I tell you what's going to happen. They're going to say, we forgive you and please forgive us. And you're going to have a new relationship. Go and do it because Jesus said so. Until the next time. Goodbye. Dankie dat jy hierdie weekse episode van Koring Aar met oom Angus Bakken gekyk het. Ons vertrouw dat jy daardoor geseen is. Vir meer inlichting oor Angus Bakken, Shalom Ministries of komende gebeure, besoek gerus www.angusbakken.co.za Jy kan ook die enkel Angus Facebookblad gaan like of volg hom op Twitter.